Welcome to Member Analysis for Hedgehogs. I decided to do another FAQ video, but this time it's just me. And also, I got two questions by now, which means we have a lot of time to discuss them. Uh, the first one is, how did you get into malware analysis? I'm not so sure if whether I answered that already in one of the previous videos, but I get this question a lot. So here's my answer. Uh, it started with me reading the book The Art of Computer Virus Research and Defense by Peter Zor. And um, as one of my colleagues told me, this is the Bible for malware analysts. So it's a very uh, it's a very good book. It's old, but it's still valid up to this day. And um, it is specialized on one malware type on, on viruses which were by then, back then when the book was written, the most prevalent malware type. That's not the case anymore, but you can use uh, the basic concepts that are covered there, are covered there even today. Um, so if you haven't read it, I, I think you should try. It's, it's pretty good. Now this book got me hooked. I was already in a stage where I had my bachelor's degree in computer science. I was still not sure what to do after I finished with the master's degree. So, um, but it got me very, very interested in that topic. And so I decided to make this topic part of my math master thesis. Um, and while I was um, writing and working on my thesis, uh, I realized this is really, really fun. I want to do that even after I'm, I'm done with uh, studying. I want to work in that area and basically being paid for doing something that that's fun, that's fascinating. Um, and that was the right decision. I had no clue how to use a debugger when I applied for a job. I knew, um, I mean, my master's thesis was about the pot of executable format and how it's being used by malware and how it can, how anomalies in the format can be used by malware and how you can use them to detect malware. So uh, it's just static analysis that I did and it's very specific to this um, file format. So I was very specialized and I had no clue in, in most of the other areas that are in regards to my analysis. Yeah, and um, I applied and they um, believed me that I'm so interested that I will learn this very fast and that's what I did. Uh, like after two to three weeks, I was already able to produce signatures for the antivirus product and that was much faster than they expected me to be able to do that. Uh, so it was the right decision. Um, you, but you also have to keep in mind that I had this, you shouldn't expect the same from you if you don't have the same foundations as I did. I was already able to uh, read assembly. I was able to, um, you know, I had, a good programming background, at least more than other computer science students in my class. And um, so with, with those foundations, it's quite easy to get into this topic. Yeah, the second question, what was that? What does the Samla do you recommend for a newbie? So if you are a newbie, I will assume that you don't have much money to pay for a commercial disassembler like Ida, um, I recommend that you go with a disassembler that also provides 64-bit support because 64-bit malware is just, uh, it's getting more and more. So you kind of need that. Um, and in my opinion, or well, that's at least the one I know, is x64 dbg it's um, modeled after Oli debugger and Oli doesn't support doesn't support 64 bits so 
go with x64 dbd if you find you will find a lot of tutorials on Oli. it has a huge community and that's uh, the cool thing is that you if you learn by those tutorials you can also use x64 dbg because it's just uh, basically you use it the same way and um, yeah but don't spend too much time on deciding what tool to use you know also same goes for uh, if, if you're trying to decide what programming language you should learn first that's the same thing you shouldn't procrastinate by uh, investing all your time into this decision because that's not helpful you just go for one language you just go for one tool and learning how to use the tool that's not the most work and that's not the most complicated stuff the uh, thing you have to learn is how to use the information that the tool gives you and in case of a disassembler, it's a disassembled code. So how do you read that code? And how can you um, step through and find um, the parts of the code that you're looking for? And that's the same with every disassembler out there. So don't uh, procrastinate with, with putting work into deciding. Just go for something, flip a coin, or just use what I said, I don't know. Uh, but keep in mind, I don't know every disassembler that's out there. So it's just what I know. Um, yeah, I hope this helps you. Uh, that's it already. Uh, have fun analyzing member and thanks for watching. See you next time.